Hey guys, and welcome to our fish room update. So we've been really busy the past week because we moved some things around in here and we got coral shipments from Worldwide Corals and from Living Reef. So it's amazing actually what we've got done in one week mm -hmm. and we're going to take you in depth around. I don't know if you can kind of see some boxes peeking out here, but we'll get to that in a minute, but we'll take you tank by tank and actually even before then what we did over in this corner right here. Yes, it looks beautiful. So we're really excited that we finally got the RODI mounted on the wall, which gives us more room for our freshwater and our saltwater vats. We did as good a job we could at short notice to make it look nice, clean, and tidy. If anybody has any ideas about what you can do to actually make it look even better, we're all ears. Let us know. One of the cool things, or one of the important things when you're mounting RDI systems is make sure that it is easy and accessible to get to those filters, because yes. you will need to change those as time goes on. And then also just having straightforward tube management actually makes it a lot easier in the event you need to disconnect something, change something, or alter it. Because when we went to actually mess with this the last time, it was actually pretty complicated the way we had it kind of set up down there, because you right. don't know where the tubes went or where the cables went. So that's a big plus and hopefully we can improve on that as time goes on. So moving to the first tank over here, we have some more softies in here. So we got a whole bunch of zoanthids, some mushrooms and some other leather pieces that Worldwide sent us. We're getting a little bit of an algae outbreak in this tank at the mm -hmm. moment. That's kind of to be expected because we've added a lot of stuff. Uh, we are doing water changes. Kelsey is doing that weekly water change. I think we do about 20% on this tank. And we're testing the parameters. All the parameters look good, but it is still a pretty new tank. So the, the rock cycled, the water cycled, but now that we're adding corals, we're definitely getting a little bit more bio load in there and things are changing up. So yep. we're gonna monitor that and do the best we can to keep it clean and keep the water in good shape. In this one, we got a couple more, or a lot more, uh, LPS pieces. It looks absolutely phenomenal. It's like everywhere you look, there is a beautiful looking coral. So I'm really happy. I love the, the gonies that were sent out. We have them in multiple colors now. Those are definitely one of my favorites in this tank. So everything's starting to get established in here. All of these uh, LPS, the frog spawn, the hammers, torches, all of that is starting to uh, get acclimated. Actually, I don't see any torches. We don't have any torches in here yet. These are all uh, frog spawn hammers. But yeah, everything looks like it's doing really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love those. I mean, I think they'll look That's absolutely beautiful. fantastic as they, they blow back and forth a little yes. bit with the flow. Yep. So very cool. Moving on to this is more of the SPS tank. As Jay said, we have some deep water Montes that were from Living Reef. And then we have other acros and other Monty pieces that were from Worldwide Corals. Yeah, so shout out to you, Josh at Worldwide for sending us a whole list extra coral, I should say extra needed <laughs> coral to fill in the tank, which is of course gonna go into what we're gonna show you in a second. Yes. But then there is those deep water Montes, which uh, Anne has so graciously <laughs> held for me for years. So thank you, Anne. Uh, one of the comments we got from last week's video was actually about the fish and uh, the fish size of the system and yeah. the comment was absolutely correct is obviously right now these tanks are temporary and we want to put these fish into the larger systems as soon as we can but uh, be cognizant of that uh, probably a little bit small for some of the fish that we have in these tanks at the moment which is also why there isn't a whole bunch of fish in them I think in here we only have the tang the chromis and a clownfish and that one I think is only a tang and a, clown, a clownfish as well. So these definitely are not their permanent homes. What they're going in is what you'll see next. But lastly, this one I just want to touch on. Mm -hmm. We actually didn't add anything to it. We're probably not going to add anything to this just because the anemones are so big. I don't want anything added to be stung and killed by them. So we're just going to keep this, the anemone only, the two that are in there, relatively large. So they're they're doing well with just that. This is actually there. the tank we could put the rest of the damsels in when we move <laughs> them out because uh, absolutely right. These We've had these anemones for so long now. Mm -hmm. um, I believe these are Colorado sunbursts that originally came from Mike Drum. So those of you who've been in the hobby long enough to know who he is and the story behind the sunburst anemones, there you have it. But yeah, hopefully we can keep this tank going forever. Yeah. That would be uh, uh, It's already been... <laughs> 
you know, six, seven years maybe. So it's just on a roll. And that leads us over to this side of the room, which we hinted at, at the beginning, which is the most exciting part of what we've been up to. Yes. And uh, here's the hint. They're finally in here. <laughs> so we got our suction cups out, the forklift. We brought in the two 300s and here they are. They are absolutely beautiful. I think one stand's white, one stand is black. I mean, just size reference, like they're huge. They're huge. Yeah. It's gonna it's like, be Kelsey. so great. Yeah, I can barely see you over there. <laughs> <laughs> we obviously have to get it plumbed and get water, sand, and rock in, which we have from Carib Sea, just so waiting for you know us to have a little bit of time to get them in there. But these are gonna be up and rocking pretty soon. I have to say too, I mean, uh, just quality of the tanks is amazing. Like just the fit and finish of everything is perfect. And even the way they arrived, I mean, they just came in these two perfect pallets, one pallet that was boxed. So a pallet with a box, the box includes the tank padded. The other pallet includes the stand pre-built with the sump and all of the other equipment. And then all you get is these two extra uh, panels and the box of plumbing, which we're going to install. So, I mean, to me, that's just revolutionary because in my career at this point, I've probably mm -hmm. built, no joke, 50 to 60 of these stands between Red Sea and Waterbox. And the result's always beautiful, but it is a pain yeah. compared to how awesome it is. To just when, open the box and it's, it's like gone. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So super excited about that. But I mean, just all of this too, like the sump, perfect. We can fit all of our equipment in yeah. there. Uh, we got the filter socks and then the chamber for the, the skimmers and the clarity rollers. And then plenty of room to put in our vectors for the return and a couple torque reactors, as well as all the dosing is going to go under here. So we got one white and we got one black. So that's what they look like. And then hopefully by the next fish room update, yes. we'll have these assembled, right. maybe with water. Maybe, fingers crossed. Next time we'll have some water in. So thank you guys for watching today and we hope you enjoyed our fish room update.